The Spirit of the Lord is upon me, for he has anointed me and sent me to preach the good news to the poor, to heal the brokenhearted. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. My brothers and sisters, on this memorial of St. John Bosco, priest of the church, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate these sacred mysteries. You are sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. You are seated at the right hand of the Father and intercede for us. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. O God, who raised up the priest St. John Bosco as a father and teacher of the young, grant, we pray, that aflame with the same fire of love, we may seek out souls and serve you alone. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the letter to the Hebrews. Brothers and sisters, since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, let us rid ourselves of every burden and sin that clings to us and persevere in running the race that lies before us while keeping our eyes fixed on Jesus, the leader and perfecter of faith. For the sake of the joy that lay before him, Jesus endured the cross, despising its shame, and has taken his seat at the right of the throne of God. Consider how he endured such opposition from sinners in order that you may not grow weary and lose heart. In your struggle against sin, you have not yet resisted to the point of shedding blood. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. They will praise you, Lord, who long for you. They, they will, will praise, praise you, Lord, Lord, who long Lord for you. I will fulfill my vows before those who fear him. The lowly shall eat their fill. They who seek the Lord shall praise him. May your hearts be ever merry. They will I praise, praise you, Lord, you, Lord, who long for, long you. for you. All the ends of the earth shall remember and turn to the Lord. All the families of the nation shall bow down before him. To him alone shall bow down all who sleep in the earth. Before him shall bend all who go into the dust. They will praise you, Lord, who long, long for, for you. you. And to him my soul shall live. My descendants shall, shall serve him. Let the coming generation be told of the Lord, that they may proclaim to a people yet to be born the justice he has shown. They will they praise, praise you, Lord, Lord who, long who long for, for you. Alleluia, alleluia. Alleluia, alleluia. Christ took away our infirmities and bore our diseases. 
Alleluia, alleluia. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. When Jesus had crossed again in the boat to the other side, a large crowd gathered around him, and he stayed close to the sea. One of the synagogue officials, named Jairus, came forward. Seeing him, he fell at his feet and pleaded earnestly with him, saying, My daughter is at the point of death. Please come lay your hands on her that she may get well and live. He went off with him, and a large crowd followed him. There was a woman afflicted with hemorrhages for twelve years. She had suffered greatly at the hands of many doctors and had spent all that she had, yet she was not helped but only grew worse. She had heard about Jesus and came up behind him in the crowd and touched his cloak. She said, If I but touch his clothes, I shall be cured. Immediately, her flow of blood dried up. She felt in her body that she was healed of her affliction. Jesus, aware at once that power had gone out from him, turned around in the crowd and asked, Who has touched my clothes? But his disciples said to him, You see how the crowd is pressing upon you, and yet you ask, Who touched me? And he looked around to see who had done it. The woman, realizing what had happened to her, approached in fear and trembling. She fell down before Jesus and told him the whole truth. He said to her, Daughter, your faith has saved you. Go in peace and be cured of your affliction. While he was still speaking, people from the synagogue's official's house arrived and said, Your daughter has died. Why trouble the teacher any longer? Disregarding the message that was reported, Jesus said to the synagogue official, Do not be afraid, just have faith. He did not allow anyone to accompany him inside except Peter, James, and John, the brother of James. When they arrived at the house of the synagogue official, he caught sight of a commotion people weeping and wailing loudly. So he went in and said to them, Why this commotion and weeping? The child is not dead, but asleep. And they ridiculed him. Then he put them all out. He took along the child's father and mother and those who were with him and entered the room where the child was. He took the child by the hand and said to her, Talitha kum, which means, little girl, I say to you, arise. The girl, a child of twelve, arose immediately and walked around. At that they were utterly astounded. He gave strict orders that no one should know this and said that she should be given something to eat. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Do not be afraid, just have faith. Faith, this ascent to our Lord's will, this ascent to our Lord's truth, this ascent to our Lord himself, is first and foremost a gift and a grace from God, and thus can only be possessed and only grown by his bequeathing of the gift, So we are encouraged to ask, and to ask habitually. Faith is also, in a complementary sense, a habit of the will. It is put into practice and perfected through the practice of our intentional acting, our intentional willing. And so we are encouraged, then, to practice daily these acts of faith, that in humbly asking our Lord, and in humbly cooperating with his will through our practice, the faith in us may grow, that we may better and better and better trust him, assent to his holy will, 
and give ourselves fully to him. And we see from the woman with hemorrhages that one who has great faith is open to and completely surrendering to the will of God working within them to heal them and bring them to him. We also, though, see that faith comes to the benefit of another. The daughter does not request Jesus' aid. She is too sick to do so, and then she dies. It is not her faith to which our Lord responds, but the faith of her father. And so we are encouraged not just for our own sake and our own well-being, but to pursue daily this gift of faith for the well-being of another, for those who are dead, and not dead in the physical sense, the spiritual sense. Those that do not trust God, do not assent to his will, do not surrender to relation to him, especially the youth. Our saint today is St. John Bosco, who himself has many accomplishments to his name by the grace of God, reportedly the first one to give a recorded interview thereof. But his great vocation, his great effort, was the education and care of the young, to help them not just be raised in the faith, but to help them know and to come to know what their vocation is, what God was specifically calling each individual youth to be raised into to do, be it married life, religious life, holy orders, single order, you name it, his devotion was to their care. And they benefited not because of their own faith, them being young and still formed, they benefited because of his, because of his belief and his love and his trust in our Lord. And it is through him as instrument that God acts and brings the young to him. John Bosco's call is our call. We are obliged out of love and faith to love our neighbor. We are obliged and privileged to help our neighbor come and find our Lord. And there is arguably no neighbor in greater need of knowing God than the young those who have so many other conflicting interests to drive their attention away. There is arguably no other persons, no other group more in need of the certainty of their vocation than the young. And our first temptation is to despair. The people wailing and gnashing, she's dead, why have you bothered the master? Because, look, the youth do not have faith in themselves to be able to say yes to our Lord. What is the point? But our Lord responds not to the faith of the daughter, but to her father. And through her father's faith brings the daughter to life. That is our offering in turn. And so we are being asked, are we one perpetually asking God's help that we may grow in faith? Are we too perpetually practicing and putting into act practice of faith that we may grow as human habit? But are we also doing as our Lord commands and using the gift he has given us for the good of others, those who are spiritually dead, those who do not hear or trust his will and his voice, those who do not know their vocation. And through our faith, are we bringing the Lord to them that he may raise them and have them share in the glory of life with him? May St. John Bosco help us to grow in our faith and love of God that we may gracefully and thankfully serve as an instrument of his faith to the young. Do not be afraid, just have faith.
My brothers and sisters, trusting in the love and mercy of our Lord, let us unite our hearts and minds and bring forth to God these petitions. For all the intentions which we hold in the silence of our hearts, and for the intentions and well-being of Scott Bircham, for whom this Mass is offered, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Almighty and ever-living God, we thank you for the profound gift of your mercy and love. Please help us by your grace and the intercession of your saints to return the gift of love to our neighbor and to you in all that we are and all that we do. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. Pray, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. We praise and glory of his name for our good and the good of all his holy church. We humbly implore your majesty, Almighty God, that just as the offerings made in honor of blessed St. John Bosco bear witness to the glory of divine power, so they may impart to us the effects of your salvation through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For as on the festival of St. John Bosco, you bid your church rejoice, so too you strengthen her by the example of his holy life, teach her by his words of preaching, and keep her safe in answer to his prayers. And so with the company of angels and saints, we sing the hymn of your praise, as without end we acclaim. Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the font of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts we pray by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, 
saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim Proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and James, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer one another the sign of peace. Take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. 
grant us peace. that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed.
Let us pray. May the mysteries we have received, O Lord, prepare us, we pray, for the eternal joys that as a faithful steward, blessed St. John Bosco came to deserve. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. The Mass is ended. Go in peace. Thanks be to God.